Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome back to Football Therapy. Yes, I am alive. I've been off for a couple of days, not making videos. I was horrendously ill, but don't worry guys. I'm coming through it, I'm on the other side and I'm feeling alright. Which is good news for everyone because I can bring new content and today's video is a match preview of Chelsea's away game against Wolves at Molyneux. That's right, the top six specialists that still very much have a feel-good factor in their team with their coach, with their fan base. A very, very tough game indeed for a multitude of reasons which I'm going to get into in this video but before we do get into the content guys I do want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel please and hit that bell notifications icon because I do generally upload every single day so yeah I want you guys to keep up, please do subscribe. And also, help a guy out who's just come out the other side of the plague, please like this video. Right, so Wolves, they're actually yet to pick up a win this season in the Premier League, but do not let that fool you. They had a lot of Europa League qualifiers to play, and generally, they're probably due a win. And they will be looking at Chelsea Football Club as the ideal situation for a win at home. Now, that's not me making a derogatory comment about Chelsea Football Club, that's just really more how Chelsea play at the moment and how Wolves play at the moment and they'll be at home and they'll be rested and they won't be you know fatigued from all these Europa League games etc. Wolves are top six specialists for a reason remember they play really badly generally against low condensed narrow blocks and they play really good against top six teams and certainly teams that want to come out and play Chelsea absolutely want to come out and play but the problem is Chelsea aren't amazing at it yet especially being weak on the transition and poor defensively and leaving space between the lines which is absolutely what Wolves want that's what they're ordering from the chef they're like one Chelsea please that leave themselves exposed at the back and on transition for our counter-attack there's a very real danger that Frank Lampard might serve up that order so a very worrying and tough fixture indeed but did Chelsea have the answers to this counter-attacking question are Wolves sufficiently rested from their European fatigue so many questions and so many tactical questions as well so on that let's open up the analysis page right so on the graphic next to me I have pulled up the lineup that Wolves sent out last time out on their 3-2 defeat against Everton the good news is for Chelsea Football Club that Willy Bolly picked up two yellow cards last time out against the Toffees which means he is a one match ban which will be this game against Chelsea Bolly is absolutely Wolves his best centre back so this is a huge plus for Chelsea but it's not enough Chelsea's biggest issues in this fixture probably won't be breaking down their defence too much it will be their weakness on the transition and in terms of the rest of the 11 that will be fielded against Chelsea you can expect Nuno Espirito Santos full complement well, minus Bolly, of his 3-5-2 counter-attacking system. So, like previously mentioned, one of Wolves' biggest concerns this season was fatigue because they keep a quite a small rotation of players and they trust, like, I don't know, 11 to 14 players more, certainly Spirito Santo does, and although they were doing very well, I think they won every single one of their Europa League qualifiers, they were looking a little bit leggy in their Premier League campaign. Now, we've just come off the international break and there will be rested legs in that Wolves side and they might be galvanised, ready to go again, all recharged and they'll look at Chelsea as a team unsettled under Frank Lampard or perhaps undeveloped under Frank Lampard and they will be rubbing their hands together for a home game at Molyneux. I actually fancy Diego Jota to return to the starting lineup here to strike up his partnership again with Jimenez, which is terrifying on the counter-attack, and Chelsea need to be incredibly aware of that. It'll be interesting to see if Doherty starts or Adama Traore. Adama Traore is an absolutely terrifying prospect running at you down that flank, but to be honest, he has some flaws Regardless, whoever plays in that position is going to be a huge threat to Chelsea. And obviously Wolves have players like Ruben from the midfield who can shoot absolute long range rockets and that's the kind of space that Chelsea usually leave unoccupied so they need to be very aware of not conceding 30 yard screamers. Right but how are Chelsea going to line up in this game? Let's switch over the graphic to a potential Chelsea lineup. 
Right, call me optimistic, but I can see a couple of key players returning to this Chelsea lineup after this international break away at Molyneux. I can see N'Golo Kante and Antonio Rudiger starting this game, hopefully. Maybe I'm being optimistic, but I hope they do because that would be massive. So I do see them both slotting into Frank Lampard's 4-3-3 formation, which remember is an adaptable shape and does change shape depending on what's going on in the game. Change to a 4-2-3-1, it also changes to a 4-4-2 out of possession. A very sort of pragmatic, adaptable formation. In terms of the front three, I do see Frank Lampard deploying yet again Tammy Abraham up front to try and continue his good Premier League form. And on the wide flanks, I can see Pulisic and Pedro starting. I do think Pedro's really quite a key player for Frank Lampard, but if he doesn't fancy him to come in, I see Mason Mount being pushed out on the left and Pulisic on the right, with Barkley being introduced into the lineup to play in the sort of 10 role or left centre mid role. And with the other two midfielders, I do expect to see that as Jorginho and Ngolo Kante. But I guess I wouldn't be surprised if there was a slight rotation there, if Mateo Kovacic comes in, if his flared Achilles is better. Generally, you wouldn't be surprised if there was a couple of different names in there. Other than that, it's probably more of the same for the Chelsea lineup. I know this isn't the 11 that Chelsea fans eventually want to see, you know, with the inclusion of Loftus Cheek, Hudson Odoi, and Reese James, all the sort of youthful, dynamic players that eventually, hopefully, can be starting 11 players under Frank Lampard. But with the inclusion of N'Golo Kante and Antonio Rudiger and this starting 11, it's already looking so, so much better and hopefully Chelsea can be more safe and secure. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit more about how this game could go, so let's just get rid of the analysis screen for a second. So obviously the big problem or biggest concern in a game like this is pretty much what I've been alluding to most of the video, the counter-attacking threat of Wolverhampton. Now they do want to let you come onto them and they want to break hard and they want to play between the lines on the counter-attack and pretty much that's been Chelsea's biggest weakness this season. Losing the ball, being poor without the ball, being really lost on transition and then conceding either silly goals or clinical goals from the opposition and to be honest Wolves will take either. They've got real speed down the flanks and especially if Adama Traore plays and that chemistry between Jota and Jimenez is so so good how they combine on the counter attack and if there's loads of space left between the midfield and the defensive line at Chelsea that's a huge problem. So what is Wolves weakness? Well <laughs> their weakness is generally playing like the bottom six teams of the Premier League table usually teams like I said before play a low narrow block they can't break down and then themselves can be um, vulnerable on the counter-attack because they don't like playing with the ball now this is a really difficult one for Chelsea because Chelsea will absolutely want to play with the ball Frank Lampard could surprise people with his uh, transparent pragmatism and play a low block against Wolves but firstly the papers will probably come out and criticize Chelsea saying they really have fallen down a few notches with this sort of B-Tech Chelsea team and now they have to play defensive football against the side that's only been in the Premier League for a year which of course would be silly nonsense but you know people do talk and you get negative headlines out of anything these days so could there be any adaptability from Frank Lampard the thing is he will probably keep his same approach try and keep the ball, try and play direct, and try and take risks. But there has to be some form of tightening up at the back that when they do you know, execute this risky play, that they're not so vulnerable on the transition or balls over the top. They need to play more narrow. Maybe give Wolverhampton the width to play. I know that's a deadly proposition with how good they are in terms of cutting the ball back, but it might be safer than this, them running straight down the middle of the pitch carving Chelsea open, squaring it, and then putting the ball past Kepa for Balaga. And on that quickly, I saw a stat on Twitter about how Kepa's got the lowest save percentage in the Premier League. Now, personally, I think Kepa's the third best goalkeeper in the Premier League. Uh, I think he could even get better than that. I do put him behind Alisson and Edison for the moment, but the thing is, Kepa's Spain's number one. He's overtaken David De Gea. Now, I think De Gea is probably the best shot stopper in the world still on form, but he's not on form. Kepa's an excellent shot stopper, but he's a superb footballing goalkeeper as well, and I think that's why Chelsea bought him. But when your defence and your structure in front of you is so, so poor, and there is space between the lines and balls are getting squared around you, 
of course you're gonna be conceding shots that you face, hence him having such a low shot saving percentage. Wow, that was so hard to save for some reason. So I do feel bad for Kepa, and I do wanna highlight that in this video, that it's not his fault he's got a bad save percentage at the moment, it really is the team structure in front of him, but hopefully as the team develops, that will get better. Anyway, back to the game. To be positive, if Rudiger and Kante come back in, that should be a lot, lot better for Chelsea. They should feel a lot safer. If Frank Lampard does tell them to play a little bit safer with those two in, then generally Chelsea fans can feel a little bit more confident. But this will be a test like none other they've had before in the four games in the Premier League so far. It will be very, very difficult. And although Manchester United are a counter-attacking side, Chelsea got kind of unlucky in that game, that 4-0 defeat, and that was a poor reflection, and it was the first game. But this game at Molyneux, will be a very, very stern test indeed. I genuinely think the most important players in this game will be players like N'Golo Kante and Antonio Rudiger if they can help Chelsea be solid. And other than that, I believe there will be enough creativity in the midfielders, the advanced attacking midfielders, and the front three to get a goal or two to try and win the game. So I'm gonna do a score prediction. I wanna be positive here. I really do, and there'll be a lot of people that would say Chelsea can lose this game, Chelsea can draw this game. I wanna be positive. I, with the assumption of N'Golo Kante and Rudiger being reintroduced into the team, I'm going to predict a 2-1 Chelsea win away at Molyneux. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get in the comments below. Let me know your score predictions. Let me know your thoughts on this game. And just generally express your thoughts on football and Chelsea in the comments below. Other than that, guys, you are welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That is at Football Yannick. And also, gang, please do like the video to help me out. That's it from me everyone. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.